Today's the day we're finally getting started with .NET MAUI by building this Exchange Rates Calculator app. We'll be setting up the development environment and using a free API to receive live exchange rates for our app. Let's open the Visual Studio installer to add the .NET MAUI workload. We click on Modify and scroll down to the Desktop and Mobile section and select .NET MAUI. Wait, what? After a quick word from today's sponsor, I'll tell you exactly how to set up your development environment and how to build your first .NET MAUI app. Visual Assist is a Visual Studio extension filling gaps for c and C and C++ developers. Visual Assist adds additional code navigation options to make your life easier. Code inspection and advanced refactoring tools help you improve your source code's readability and overall quality. Code correction corrects mistakes as you type. For example, you can type in lowercase and Visual Assist automatically fixes your code. Visual Assist adds additional code assistance features including intelligent suggestions while typing and it offers unique features for Unreal Engine development. Visual Assist boosts your developer productivity. Check out Visual Assist using the link in the video description and download your free 30-day trial today. In the Getting Started section of the official .NET MAUI documentation, we can see that we need Visual Studio 2022 17.3 to get access to the .NET MAUI workload. At the time of this recording, version 17.3 is still in preview. If you watch this later, it might be included in the regular Visual Studio release channel. Luckily, installing the preview version side by side is no issue at all and that's exactly what we're going to do next. By the way, if you want to learn more about the preview versions of Visual Studio, watch the video linked in the corner. The installer comes pre-configured with the .NET MAUI workload selected. If you happen to already have the Visual Studio preview version installed, make sure to select the .NET MAUI workload and press install. It's going to take a while until the installation finishes. After the installation has been completed, we launch Visual Studio and create a new project. We select the .NET MAUI app template and click next. We select the location on the disk and name the project MAUI Demo. On the next page, we select .NET 6 as the target framework and press the Create button. It takes a few seconds for Visual Studio to create the project for us. As soon as Visual Studio is ready, we build the application and double-click the error in the error list to accept the license agreements. In the project launch settings, we select the Android emulator. If it's the first time selecting the Android emulator, the Android device manager will open and a wizard will start that helps you create your first Android emulated device. By the way, please don't ask me why Visual Studio decides to open the Android device manager in my operating system language, even though Visual Studio is set to English. The download and installation of the emulator takes quite some time. After the installation has been completed, we press the start button to see the next pop-up message. In order to have decent performance, we need to activate Hyper-V on Windows. If you don't have it already activated, you need to open the Windows Features dialog and install Hyper-V. I'm sure you already guessed it. After the installation of a Windows feature, we need to reboot our system. So, after 30 minutes of installation, we finally are in Visual Studio again and start the app in the Android emulator. It might take a few seconds to launch the emulator. The good news is that we can keep the Android emulator open at all time and if we hit F5 in Visual Studio, a new version of the app gets deployed to the emulator without restarting it. The app generated by the project template has an image, some text and a button. If you click the button, the text changes. In the mainpage.xaml file, we see a button with a registered on-click handler. In the implementation of the handler, we see that the counter button text gets changed to include the number of times it was hit. Apparently, 
On our device, there isn't enough space to show the whole text. To fix this issue, we add a property to the button in the main page.xaml file. We set the width request property to 250 and start the app again. Now every button click gets counted and the number of button clicks is correctly shown on the button text. Can we finally build the exchange rate app you talked about a few minutes ago? I'm so glad you asked. Let's change the title of the page to exchange rates. Next, we change the image shown on the page. I already added a money back icon to the images folder in the resources folder. Let's change the source of the image to match the file's name and set the description accordingly. Next, let's replace the labels with a predefined snippet. We have four labels. They all contain a heading level property, a font size property, a font attributes property, a width request property with value 145, and a horizontal options property. Next, let's replace the button definition. In the main page.saml.cs file, we comment the code to prevent the error message from building the application. We launch the application to see the new user interface we just defined. Now that we have the user interface in place, let's attach a click handler to the update button. In the main page.saml.cs file, we remove the count variable and delete the commented code. Because we want to focus on getting our app to run, I insert the implementation of this method. We first create an instance of the HTTP client and add an API key to the request headers. Next, we call the API and deserialize the JSON response into an object of type current rates. Let's quickly insert the missing types. Let's launch the app again. We click on the update rates button, receive the current exchange rates from the API and see them in the app. Setting up the environment takes some time, but implementing a few labels and buttons as well as calling an API can be done quickly. There is so much more to unpack about .NET MAUI. On this channel, we'll learn about navigating between pages, accessing settings from configuration files, and many more features of .NET MAUI. There is a link in the video description to the exchange rate API used in this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to see more .NET content in the future.